How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and this is the ultimate NVIDIA control panel optimization guide. By the end of this video you'll be running the absolute best settings possible for your NVIDIA GPU, whether it's high end, low end, laptop, desktop, old or new, whether it's a GTX series, RTX series or anything in between, alongside knowing about some of the tech that's available for your systems whether you're looking for more FPS or to increase visual fidelity in some of your favourite games. Stop paying full price for Windows today and get activated from as little as $16 using WhoKeys. Use the links in the description down below, choose from Windows 10, Windows 11 or Office keys, add to checkout, use code PAN20 at checkout for an additional 25% off your order and to help support the channel, pay via a secure payment method including PayPal, once purchased your key will be available immediately, head over to activate Windows, paste the key, will then have access to all Windows features and no more watermark. The Windows 10 keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description down below and a massive thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. First of all, we're starting off with updating the GPU drivers. This is free, easy and and quick to do, not only will you be receiving all of the latest game ready driver updates for better performance in newer titles, but you'll also be gaining access to some new features which you may not have available on your older drivers. Google search GeForce drivers, head over to nvidia.com so you can choose the automatic driver updates tab or you can navigate down to manual driver search. For those of you that have GeForce experience installed, navigate to the top left hand side to the drivers section, select the check for update section, if any updates are found they will automatically be downloaded and installed to your PC. For those of you that are serious about getting the absolute best performance possible out of your NVIDIA GPU, it is highly recommended that you de-bloat and customise your very own NVIDIA driver. You can remove excess old features you have no intention of using, you can also apply some extra settings when applying the driver update to get better performance out of your NVIDIA GPU. For those of you looking to dive even further into optimising your NVIDIA GPU, you can check out the NVIDIA Profile Inspector Guide which is an incredibly powerful and useful tool which you can dive deeper into the control panel settings into the back end and access hidden features or extended settings of what is typically available inside of the NVIDIA control panel. Once you are on the latest GPU drivers, restart your system and we're good to go. First stop is to boot into the NVIDIA control panel. You can do this by right clicking on your desktop, heading down to show more options, or alternatively going to the bottom right hand side, right clicking on the NVIDIA logo. Alternatively, navigate down to the Windows search button, search for NVIDIA. If you still cannot see the NVIDIA control panel, we can download it manually from the Microsoft store. All you need to do is search for store, open the Microsoft store, then search for NVIDIA control panel. To this section, select install in the top right hand side, then open up the control panel. First we'll be starting off on the top left hand side and working our way down. Starting off with adjust image settings with preview. We're going to change this to the middle option so we can actually apply our own settings. Go to the bottom, select apply. Navigate down to manage 3D settings. We have the global settings panel and program settings. Program settings are per application or per game settings of the NVIDIA control panel. Let's say you wanted to enable some specific features on a certain game you play but you don't want them applied to all of your games or your GPU you as a whole. Well, the program settings are a fantastic way to set personalized settings for each individual application. For now, head over to the global settings. If any specific option is not covered in this video, feel free to leave it alone or at its stock value and proceed on to the next setting. For the first setting, we have image sharpening or image scaling, depending if your system supports it. NVIDIA's image scaling or NIS is a fantastic and easy way to get more performance out of some of your favorite games, similar to how AMD's FSR operates, but at a driver level. In very basic terms, if you enable this setting and boot into one of your favorite games, set the resolution in your game to anything lower than your monitor's native resolution, NIS will kick in, upscaling that resolution, helping it scale and look better than what the resolution typically would on your system, providing a big FPS uplift. This isn't as good as DLSS or FSR technology, but it's built into the driver and available if you want it. In this instance, I can go down from 2160p to 1836, which is a tiny reduction in overall resolution, but provides me with a massive FPS bump, and I've been using this in almost all of the games in which I play. If you've seen a decent an FPS bump but it's not quite enough and you're still happy with how the game looks, lower the resolution by another step. Keep repeating this step until you find a resolution which both performs well and still looks good on your system. Ambient occlusion. For the absolute best FPS possible we will be going with off, otherwise set this to performance. Anisotropic filtering I would recommend setting to application controlled. Anti-aliasing FXAA is going to be set to off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction. It's recommended to have this on to ensure that you have the best visuals possible. Anti-aliasing mode is going to be set to application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency is going to be switched to off, background application maximum frame rate. This will limit the FPS of any game or 3D application that's running when you tab out. Let's say you're playing a game at 200 FPS, you tab out, go away from the PC for a few minutes but that game is still running at 200 FPS in the background, soaking up system resources and power. If you do wish to set this up, go with on and I would set this to about 20 FPS. CUDA GPUs, go to the drop down menu, highlight any and all GPUs with inside of here. For those of you on the latest GPU drivers, for many GPUs you'll also see a new option listed 
adopted as CUDA MEM fallback policy. For nearly every single one of you watching this video, you want to leave this set to driver default. If you're wondering what this setting does, it changes the behavior of applications once your system's VRAM is full. This is mostly going to be for those of you doing AI or machine learning work with large language models. Once the VRAM on your GPU reaches full capacity, the program will either fall back to system memory or the program will outright crash or close itself down instead of falling back to the much slower system RAM. The best performance will more than likely be no system fallback, but for those of you playing games, you don't want to experiment around with this option. Leave it to driver default and continue on. Low latency mode is going to be switched from off to on. Some of you on gaming laptops with NVIDIA GPUs may only see the option to go with ultra. If that is the case, for the lowest latency possible on those machines, I would recommend ultra. Utilizing on will limit the queued frames to one, minimizing latency but maximizing throughput. With how available NVIDIA Reflex is with inside of many games, the low latency mode will be overridden anyway the moment you enable Reflex, which you 100% should do if it's available in any title you're playing. Max frame rate we're going to be setting to the video. For those of you on G-Sync or FreeSync compatible displays, you will also see the options to set this up with inside of here. Whether you should use G-Sync or not really comes down to your personal preferences and the games in which you play. If you play a lot of hyper-competitive games where every frame matters and you need the lowest latency, and you're often able to achieve higher FPS than your monitor's refresh rate, then you'll more than likely want to go with a fixed refresh style and not utilize G-Sync or FreeSync. On the flip side of that, if you would like to make your PC more efficient, you play more single player or slower paced games and you don't need every single frame, but you would rather get a smoother, more consistent and potentially better gameplay experience, then G-Sync is a fantastic option. For an extremely quick and basic rundown of how to set up G-Sync, you'll first of all need to enable G-Sync with inside of this panel, then make sure that V-Sync has been switched on inside of the control panel. You'll then need to navigate over to your games or you could set this across the entire system to cap your maximum frame rate 3 FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. For those of you on 144Hz monitors, that would mean capping at 141. Go inside of any of your favorite games, make sure the V-Sync has been switched off in the game, and you're good to go. Multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing is going to be switched to off. OpenGL GDI compatibility is going to be set to auto. OpenGL rendering GPU is going to be set to your NVIDIA's graphics card. Scrolling down to power management mode. For the global settings, we do not want to use prefer maximum performance because this will stop your GPU idly, which will be wasting power, increasing heat, and it's just a really big waste. Instead, we're going to be going with normal, or in some cases, this could be listed as optimal. We will be changing this on some games later on using the program settings, but for the global setting, go with normal or optimal. Preferred refresh rate is going to be set to highest available. Shader cache size is going to be set as high as possible, depending on how much free space you have available on your C drive. All you need to do is head down to the Windows File Explorer. On the left-hand side, go to this PC. If you have over 300 gigabytes free available on this drive, I would set the shader cache size to 100 gigabytes. Texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization is going to be switched to on. Texture filtering negative LOD bias is going to be set to allow. Texture filtering quality, there is no real reason to go with anything besides quality. Trilinear optimization is going to be switched to on. Threaded optimization, we're going to leave this set to auto. Triple buffering is going to be switched off. If you care about FPS or latency at all, vertical sync is also going to be switched off unless you are utilizing a proper G-Sync or FreeSync setup. Disabling V-Sync inside of the control panel if you are not utilizing G-Sync or FreeSync also has benefits where games have FPS locks tied to V-Sync like Apex Legends or Escape from Tarkov. Disabling V-Sync inside of the control panel, booting into those games and turning V-Sync to on is a simple way to bypass potential FPS limits of the game, allowing you to achieve your system's full potential in those titles with a drastic FPS boost. Virtual Reality pre-rendered frames is going to be set to 1, Virtual Reality variable rate super sampling. For those of you on higher end systems and you do make use of VR, you could potentially have your games render a higher resolution of your immediate field of view. If you have no intention of playing around with VR settings or don't use VR, leave this to off. Otherwise, I would go with adaptive. Vulkan slash OpenGL preset method is going to be set to auto. Once those settings have been set up, go to the bottom right and select apply. We can now jump into per game settings for a lower latency, better visuals, or higher FPS. Head over to program settings. You'll first of all want to navigate down to the drop down menu and find the application you want to optimize. If you can't find your game with inside of here, head over to the add section where you'll see a more extensive list. And if you still can't find your game, with inside of here, navigate down to browse and browse directly to the game's application. Some options you may want to experiment around with. If you don't wish to utilize NAS across the entire system, once again, you can navigate over to the program settings and just enable image scaling for individual games. And you can set the sharpen level per game as well. If the game you're playing does not support NVIDIA Reflex and you're getting quite low FPS, it may be beneficial to go to low latency mode and set this over to ultra instead of on, on this specific game. If you want to cap FPS for any reason in your specific title, whether you want a more consistent frame cap for efficiency purposes to not waste more energy, gain a more consistent and smooth frame time graph, or if your game doesn't have a built-in method of capping FPS, heading over to maximum frame rate, go into the drop
drop down menu for this, switching this to on, then setting your desired FPS cap. And once it's applied, you never have to jump into the control panel settings again. That game's FPS will constantly be limited to that number you set. If you wanted to then set different per game settings for a different game, head to the drop down menu, select the next game, go through all of the settings for that specific game. And once you're done, go to apply. Next up, for a select few of you that may have this option available to you of change ECC state, this is error correction, which applies to the GPU's VRAM. For those of you that primarily game on your GPU, which is going to be most of you watching this video, you don't want to make use of ECC. So unless you're doing any massive 3D workloads, machine learning tasks, or any industry level work, it's highly recommended to deselect ECC if it's selected for your GPU for a small performance uplift. Next is configure surround physics. Head over to the right hand side to the physics settings and set this to your Nvidia GPU. Next up is change resolution. Scroll down, select use Nvidia color settings. Once selected, go to the right, select apply. Heading over to adjust desktop color settings. These settings are complete personal preference and it doesn't really matter what you set any of them to. Navigate to your monitor, head down to the digital vibrance setting and drag this slider. You'll see a drastic increase to the monitor's saturation levels and you can set this to anything you wish to do so. Navigating down to adjust desktop size and position. I would highly recommend just sticking with the full screen option with inside of here. Utilizing no scaling will give you slightly lower latency in some scenarios but it will severely limit the functionality of some features. This will also force you to only use native resolution inside of your games because anything lower will result in black borders around the window. Navigate down, ensure that refresh rate is still set to as high as possible and that you are utilizing the monitor's native resolution. One last thing I would 100% recommend that you check to see if it's enabled on your GPU. For those of you on RTX 30 series, 40 series or anything newer, head to the top to the help section, then navigate down to system information. This page will open up. If you see the option for resizable bar, this means that your GPU does support resizable bar and you'll see its current status next to this. As you can see on my PC, I have resizable bar and it's set to yes. If your PC says resizable bar but says no or unsupported, it means that your GPU supports resizable bar but you haven't currently enabled it in your motherboard's BIOS. This is essential to get the absolute best performance possible out of a modern Nvidia GPU and you're leaving anywhere from 5 to 15% performance by simply not having this setting turned on. I recently released a video to the channel which you can also find in the description down below which will show you from the start to finish enabling resizable bar for your Nvidia GPU but it won't actually be running in your favorite games if Nvidia hasn't manually put the profile in in a new driver update. But you can actually enable it yourself in every game you played. Simply Google Nvidia Profile Inspector, head over to the GitHub link for Orb MU2K, navigate slightly down to the Nvidia Profile Inspector.zip, open up the zip and open Nvidia Profile Inspector. If you want it enabled across the entire system, make sure that you have Global Driver Profile selected in the top left hand side. If you want to set this up for a specific game, type the name of the game out. Let's say I wanted to enable this for Counter-Strike 2. Once selected, go through the different sections until you find section number 5 listed as common. Inside of here you'll then be able to find R-Bar feature, options and size limit. Set R-Bar feature to enabled, set R-Bar options to 0x001 and R-Bar size limit needs to be set to 0x004. Go to the top right hand side to apply changes. Next time you restart your PC, this will then be applied to either the global profile or the specific game you selected in the top left hand side. Those of you utilizing laptops, here are some very quick but essential performance improvements you can apply. First off, flip over your laptop, search the make and model online and see if your laptop has what's known as a MUX switch. This allows your laptop to no longer have to rely and utilize the laptop's integrated graphics, often Intel or Ryzen, as a pipeline to your dedicated GPU. In a typical gaming laptop setup which does not support a MUX switch, the dedicated GPU is doing the graphics rendering, it's then sending that to your laptop's CPU's integrated graphics chip, which is then delivering that to the laptop's screen. This in turn introduces more input latency and reduces FPS as you're adding an extra chain into the rendering pipeline and it's really inefficient. Many laptops these days do come with a MUX switch and if that is available in the motherboard's BIOS, please do utilize this to make sure that you are running directly through the dedicated GPU. Windows 11 in very basic terms almost has a software MUX switch which helps to alleviate many of the inefficiencies of this but it's still not perfect. But if you still can't get around the MUX issue, the best possible solution for this is to either buy or utilize a spare monitor you may have. 144Hz or even 240Hz 1080p panels are really cheap these days so if you're looking for something to get over the holiday season you can't quite justify an entire upgrade. You could see anywhere from a 5 to 20% performance increase utilizing a dedicated monitor, lower latency and also unlock technology such as FreeSync or G-Sync for your laptop. All you need to do is connect the laptop via USB-C, HDMI or DisplayPort, flip over the laptop or disable the laptop screen because you don't want to be rendering two instances and you're good to go. This also allows you to utilize technology such as Nvidia's image scaling on that 1080p display where you could potentially run the resolution like 900p inside of your games and see a phenomenal FPS improvement. This is a fantastic option for those of you on more entry level to mid-range laptops like myself. And to close off, 
off, we have the benchmarks. On screen there, you can see a bunch of different systems utilizing many of the settings which are showcased in this video before and after, and the performance uplift which we were able to see. Your results will vary depending on which settings you chose to go with or without, but please do let me know which settings you've decided to go with for your system and what sort of performance uplift or gameplay enhancements you've been able to see from using them. If you have enjoyed this content, please do remember to leave a like as it does help me out tremendously, and if you are serious about optimizing your PC, consider checking out the playlist section in the description down below. But if you're not sure where to go next, consider checking out one of the two videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.